All right, welcome back to the garage, everyone. All right, I'm not real sure how this video is going to go today, but we're going to give it a shot anyway, all right? Uh, basically, I'm waiting on parts, and there's not a whole lot I can do other than clean things. So, uh, I started by cleaning up this leaf spring. I got uh, some new uh, flap discs and I uh, went to town on this first uh, leaf here and I got to the ends and I realized that, you know, I can't really do a very good job on that unless I take this little cup out and uh, that's where the uh, end links mount to either side of the leaf spring. So I'm gonna have to remove those and I got some more on order. They'll be in in a few days. Consequently, the other end of that, the other end of the link is in the rear trailing arm, which, uh, let's see, right here, uh, which I did not remove when I uh, cleaned this part up. So they're in there, they look, you know, they're good, um, but they look a little, they're a little rusty still in there, you know, even, they, even though they were in the valve rust, you can't, can't really get down in there. So I got four of them on uh, order. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace those as well. Of course, I'll have to dig the other one out of the trailing arm that I refurbished already, but that's not a big deal. I just tap it out and it, it shouldn't be a, a problem. So the new ones simply slip up through here. And as a matter of fact, let's see, I wonder if this, I bought this kit thinking I would need it and I put it for a different purpose. Let's see. Does that, yeah, that fits on there. So this was for, this kit here is for the, uh, the bushings on the end of the rear trailing arm where they attach to the car. Uh, if you bought the OEM bushings, they need to be expanded out like that using this tool. That's what this tool is for, but uh, having second thoughts here, I might be able to use it for this as well. I think I think that's gonna work out pretty well. Uh, if you hear uh, neighbor Rick blowing leaves in the background, then, well, it is Saturday after all. So let's look over here and take a, take a look at uh, some more of the carnage that we have. Um, we are doing electrolytic zinc plating here. And uh, you pro if you follow the Facebook page, I gave you the recipe for the, I found, I found the recipe online. I'm not a wizard here. I just follow the directions. You got 12.7 cups of water, 6.4 cups of vinegar, six tablespoons of Epsom salt, six tablespoons of sugar. Apparently the sugar makes the parts bright. Um, so got your, actually, and I didn't even know what Epsom salt was other than old people soak their feet in it for some unknown reason. Uh, magnesium sulfate. If you have, if, and if you have feet that hurt, I'm sorry, okay, anyway. <laughs> so that's the mixture there. And I got some welding wire here and a piece of copper tubing that I cut from the, I had the household air conditioner replaced a while back and uh, I had a bunch of copper tubing left over. I told the guys, I said, hey, you, that's mine. You leave that here, I'm keeping that. So keep stuff like this. Anyway, got a copper tube. You hang the part using the welding wire down in the solution and get yourself some of this roofing zinc, a big roll of roofing zinc. It's cheap, get it on Amazon. Cut a couple of strips right here. Basically, you hang it down in the solution from the electrodes. Basically, you put a positive on one of them right, and you hang it down in there. And then your negative lead from your power supply is gonna go over here to your, uh, your copper tube where your parts are dangling. And then what you wanna, you put, put a second strip on the other side and then connect those two strips with a, uh, another jumper, which I have right here. And then, um, you know, you can, you can plate stuff at home. That, I've got about a hundred bucks in this. It's not a big deal, really. Let me show you a couple of parts I've already done. I've done eight or 10 parts already. Eh, pardon the mess, but you know me. So, like, here's a bolt where, that holds the, uh, as a matter of fact, this is the bolt that holds the rear leaf spring. 
onto the car. And this is one I played it earlier. It's like a cooking show around here. So I didn't get into the threads really good because I didn't clean them up. But this is a bolt that I coated with zinc. And, uh, and here's the bolt that, uh, that's the bolt that uh, the rear trailing arm attaches to the car with. And here's a bracket that goes, this is part of the uh, leaf spring as well. I coated that one. And uh, I'll give you a good example and I'll give you a bad example. How about that? Let's see. All right, let's do a good and bad example. So if you clean up your part really well, and get all the rust out of the pits and stuff, and then you zinc plate it, that's what you get. Again, I, I didn't get the threads cleaned up that well. I'm not, not really concerned about that. They're gonna have a little grease on them anyway and be down in the part and it'll never rust. But I wanted to keep the heads of the bolts really looking nice. So that's what, that was the point of this. But this one, I didn't get all the rust out of the, out of the pits on the head and I tried to coat it and it didn't work out very well. So that means I gotta go, you know, get this one back underneath the wire wheel uh, and try again or I could get a tumbler. And one of my friends commented on one of the previous videos, said, hey man, can you try a tumbler? I'm like, yeah, I don't know. But the tumbler, about yay big, takes up a lot of room, a couple hundred bucks, and you gotta buy all the stuff to put in the tumbler, and it takes hours. Yeah, I just didn't wanna go there. But, uh, I, you know, so for now, I think I'm gonna stick with the wire wheel. Uh, well, anyway, that's what you got. So I've got a fair number done already and um, a whole bunch more to go. <laughs> so that is, uh, I think I'm gonna spend uh, quite a bit of time this weekend trying to plate some parts. I tell you what, let me go ahead and get set up. I'll do a few in the, uh, I'll set up a few to start plating them and I'll just show you what it looks like uh, here just shortly. All right, that's what we got. Uh, I was hanging a long piece of zinc over the side of the container, cause it, but that was, seemed a little, a little wasteful. So I got a shorter piece of zinc uh, connected in there and just kind of dangled the wires over the edge. And uh, two pieces on either side, got this wa black wire connects the two pieces of zinc and the positive goes here and the ground goes on the center. So on the parts cleanup, I took those over to the uh, flap disc and got it, all the rust off, off that I could. Also, you wanna uh, get all the grease off of them with some acetone and try not to touch them with your fingers. And I just kinda wipe them down with the acetone in a rag and then grab the part with the, the hook of a, of a wire without touching it and then dangle it from the copper, so. Go ahead and turn on the power supply. And I've been doing this about, I don't know, 0.8 or 0.9, maybe almost an amp, something like that. You know, it's, I don't think it really matters a whole lot, but yeah, that's three and a half volts at 0.9 of an amp. And uh, you can crank it up and cook it. Now, it's, now you can see it's starting to bubble already. Now, this bracket here on the left-hand side, I, there's rust down in there, but I can't get it out. So I'm not gonna worry about coating the inside of that because this bracket here in the middle actually sits in there and it's just gonna get a bunch of grease in it anyway, so I'm not gonna worry about it. But um, the outside of it, I did clean up because you're gonna see that part. And then this washer here is goes on the end link uh, for, the, uh, for the leaf spring mount. These parts are kind of large, so let's crank this bad boy up to, I don't know, let's just guess at it up 1.5 amps there. Yeah, we're starting to bubble quite a bit right now, so. And we're gonna let this run for, oh, I don't know, about 20 minutes. You little buddies just cook now. We'll be back shortly. You can see the gray coating forming there. And they are cooking along pretty well. And that's what you got. So I think a few more minutes and we'll pull them out. All right, let's go ahead and pull them out of there. Turn the power off. I don't guess you really need to do that, but uh, I do it anyway. And that's the gray coating I was talking about. 
And let's see, that one actually could use a little more cook time, I think. It's a pretty big part. So, take a look at this big washer here. It was pretty badly pitted. And there's the smooth side. You can see the smooth side there. That got a really good even coat. So basically, once you wire wheel that, it'll be shiny. And uh, that, I'll show you that next. All right, so I decided to do a, try to up my efficiency here a little bit. I've got uh, this stuff here soaking in uh, acetone. And these are, uh, I don't want to touch them, get my greasy fingers on them. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to fill this up. We'll spread them apart. But you see what I'm doing, right? So I want to see if I can't up my efficiency by doing a bunch of uh, little parts at once. So I'm going to put them on this double hanger and dip it down in there like that. All right, that's what we got. Helps to have a magnetically tipped screwdriver. You can dip it down in there and grab something and pull up on it and kind of move it over. You don't want to separate them. You don't want them touching like these two are right here. Careful. My wire is not perfectly horizontal. It's got a little tilt in it. Anyway, eh, you know, if they touch a little bit, I guess that's okay. This is not, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just some nuts and bolts, okay, folks? So this is not going on a piece of artwork. It's going underneath a car. I want to juice that one a little while longer, though. Uh, let's crank this bad boy back up. All right, in the meantime, let's go uh, polish this guy up. And where's that other piece? That one, that one there too. All right, I went over to the uh, wire wheel. I use a, br I used a brass wire wheel, by the way. So, uh, just to go easy on the coating. However, it didn't seem to affect it. It, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty doggone resilient. And anyway, so this uh, big washer here has been uh, zinc coated, and the back was really heavily pitted. You can still see the Made in Canada logo however so I would say that's pretty good here's this little bracket here and you can see where the badly pitted rusted area was there I couldn't get that out so I mean I could if I really took a lot of metal off but yeah, I don't see the point point. and there was a very I think this was just a manufacturing defect right here this big pit right here but uh, that one you know I cleaned this one up on the bench grinder actually because this was a very rough piece of bar stock and they just shoved it in there put a couple of holes in it and tapped them and this is for attaching the rear leaf spring it didn't have to be pretty and they didn't put a whole lot of time into it that's for sure uh, but it is zinc plated now so there you go that's the process oh and by the way here's a big castle nut that goes on the uh the rear trailing arm so i, I plated that one as well and uh Looks pretty good. Hard to believe that's an original part. All right, there's that big long line of washers and nuts and stuff. And I'm gonna leave that big one in there a little while longer, but uh, they're cooking really nicely. So just to give you an update on the uh, parts shipment, uh, the cross member bushings that I ordered last weekend uh, still have not arrived. They went from Lake Zurich, Illinois to Palatine, Illinois, to Elk Grove Village, Illinois. All of these places I know where they are because I've been to Chicago a lot. And then it went back to Lake Zurich. And then it went back to Palatine. And then it went back to Elk Grove Village, which is where they are now. Having said all that, I expect it'll take another week or I won't get them at all. Uh, but I'm gonna wait until Monday, uh, the 6th of November to see where they are and if they don't make a move then then i'm gonna basically do a return on rock auto and just tell them sorry i never got my part it's been over a week and it's lost in the mail so and they're pretty good i think they'll i think they'll make it right we did get the uh gasket for the differential finally so we could go ahead and uh, finish cleaning up the gasket surface and put the cover back on the diff and then clean up the outside of the diff. I think I might do that next. Uh, this is a Molly part and that's uh, pretty nice. You can't just buy these anywhere, man. You gotta, you gotta order, I couldn't find this anywhere around here locally. I had to order it uh, from Rock Auto. And yeah, made in the USA, how about that? Very nice product indeed. All right, there's that little bracket. I got it uh, zinc plated. And 
actually actually worked out pretty well. Uh, I'm happy with that. That should be fairly well protected over the years. And uh, even got down inside a little bit too. Uh, there's still some rust down in there, but that'll be all right. And that little uh, group of uh, fasteners I had hanging on the wire, they're done as well. Zinc plated. Lock washers. Nut. So, works pretty well. Oh, the one caveat to that is clearly the gray coating has to be wire wheeled off after you uh, do the cooking process. In my case, since I'm doing just this one project, I'm okay with it. The gray coating comes off very easily, so it's not like you have to grind it, you know, right? it's just, it just zip, 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 it comes off really easily. However, if I was gonna do this again, and more often, I would go ahead and get a tumbler. Uh, I resisted getting a tumbler, but I'm thinking, Mm, yeah, that would make this job a lot easier. So if you're gonna do them in big batches, you know, if you had a business or something like that and and you were to do big batches of fasteners and clearly you wanna clean them up with a tumbler, throw them into the plater, take them back out, throw them back into the tumbler and get the gray coating off and then ba basically a new money. If I was gonna do it on a large scale, that's the way I would do it. All in all, it's working out pretty well for me so far. All right, I just went ahead and tapped these little cups out of the end of that uh, one leaf. And I think you can tell that we're doing the right thing here. It's, it's pretty heavily pitted. It's, it's a mess, so it needed to be replaced. So those will be in in, I don't know, four or five days maybe. Let's hope they don't go through Palatine, Illinois. All right, that's what we got. Clearly, I need to have Rick come by and uh, do something about this, but I ain't worried about it right now. So... Got those little things out of there and got that rust off and I got another little die grinder out with a little little twirly doohickey in there and got that rust cleaned out up in there. Did that on both ends. So, you know, that's good enough for government work, as they say. Up next, we're going to do a metal prep on this and then uh, get us some primer on it. All right, and that's the uh, two bottom leaf's leaves off the uh, leaf spring. I've already done the uh, metal prep job on these guys. We've got a, a nice gray haze right there. Doing them one at a time. Clean them up with a razor blade, flap disc them, and then I uh, metal prep them, and then we'll get a prime, and then we'll get black. And of course, you know, I went ahead and zinc plated the leaf spring parts as well. And they look pretty good. There's your four main bolts that hold it up. Lock washers actually uh, turned out really well. I forget what these go to. Uh, probably parking brake bracket or something. Anyway. All right, we're back at it. Got these two biggest uh, leaves, leaves, anyway, out here. Got the old Duplicolor self-etching. I love that stuff. Anyway, gonna go ahead and get all these uh, leaves primed up and then uh, we'll get it in black. All right, I know it doesn't look like much, but I got all the uh, leaves uh, painted there. And I uh, got the spacers out there. Going to prime those here in the next few minutes. And I will be done with the rear leaf spring, except for reassembly. And, of course, we still have to wait on those two parts to come in for either end uh, right there. But that'll be a little later on in the week. All right, folks, I think I'm going to wrap this video up right here. And, again, I've run out of time. Uh, for the weekend and the regular job calls tomorrow morning. So I spent most of the weekend again cleaning up parts because well they simply need it and I'm waiting on bushings for the cross member and I'm waiting on the cups for the end of the leaf spring and I've decided I'm also going to go ahead and order uh, the new plastic cushions that go between the leaves. The leaves? I always mess that up. Anyway uh, so those, that stuff will be in in a few days, hopefully, and hopefully the bushings will get out of Palatine, Illinois, uh, long enough to uh, reach Alabama. Uh, but I think the highlight here for this video was really I wanted to try this zinc plating, and I'll have to say it was really quite simple. The main thing you want to keep in mind is prep of the parts. Um, they need to be really, really clean, no oil, no grease, no additional rust. Uh, a media 
blaster or a tumbler is probably preferred to clean up the parts. Uh, you can just use standard methods, however, but it just takes a little bit longer. Uh, but the process works really well. All right, folks, that's all for now. I appreciate you guys stopping by the channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video, don't forget to click that little bell down below. You guys have a good one, and remember to enjoy restoring your classic leaf spring.